Hello, and welcome to this fourth grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Ms. Ott, and today we are going to learn more about the addition and subtraction of decimals. For today's lesson, you will need a pencil and some paper. We'll wait as you gather these materials. Take a look at these four images. Which one doesn't belong? Remember, there are many different ways you could answer this question. As mathematicians, it is important to justify our thinking. So practice being a communicator by sharing your ideas out loud to yourself or someone nearby. Maybe you chose B as the one that doesn't belong because it is the only one that has a picture. Perhaps you said C doesn't belong because it is the only one in decimal form. You could have said that D doesn't belong because it is the only one that doesn't represent 25 hundredths. Or maybe you said A doesn't belong because it has the digits one and four and the rest of the pictures show two and five. Today, you will learn more about adding and subtracting decimals. We will be connecting what we know about adding and subtracting whole numbers to adding and subtracting decimals. Throughout the lesson today, you will have opportunities to communicate your thinking and share how you are a critical and creative thinker by thinking about what you know about numbers and the connections you are making. Let's think about this problem together. The first day of a trip, your family drove 130 miles. The second day, your family drove 69 miles. How many miles did your family drive during those two days? Before we solve the problem, let's estimate what the answer might be. A good way to estimate is to change the numbers so the math is easy to do in your head. Go ahead and make your estimate now. Since I need to find the total miles driven, I am going to join the first and the second day to get the total for the two days. 130 is a number that I can work with in my head pretty easily. 69 is not as easy to think about, but 69 is close to 70. 130 plus 70 miles gives me a total of 200. The family drove about 200 miles. My answer should be very close to 200. Take a few minutes and use your paper now to find the exact answer. One way to solve this problem is to decompose or take apart the numbers. We will use blocks and numbers to represent this strategy. How did we take apart the two add-ins? We decompose the add-ins by their place value. Now we can put the parts back together to find the total. I can see the 100 block plus the 30 plus 60 plus 9. So I can put those tens together to make 90. And now I can put all three place values together to see that the total is 199 miles. We could combine these numbers in another way too. In this case, 
we would keep the 130 and only decompose the 69 into 60 and 9. Then we would add 130 plus 60 to get 190 plus 9 to get our total of 199 miles. We could also use a jump back strategy using the estimate. When we estimated, we thought of 69 as 70. Since 70 is one more than 69, I would have added one extra, so I can jump back one to get to 199 miles. Now let's think about a new problem. Over the weekend, you walked the family dog. The first day, you walked two and two tenths miles, and the second day, you walked zero and 77 hundredths miles. How far did you walk the dog? Take a moment to estimate first. To solve this problem, I am going to add the distance for the first and second day to get the total. 2 and 2 tenths miles is close to 2, and 77 hundredths miles is close to 1. 2 miles plus 1 mile gives me a total of 3 miles. Our exact answer should be close to 3 miles. One of the strategies we used for whole number addition was to decompose or break apart the numbers. Use your paper and pencil to decompose the add ends of this problem and then add the parts together. When we decompose these two add-ins, we have a new number sentence, 2 plus 2 tenths plus 7 tenths plus 7 hundredths. We can combine the tenths together to see that we now have 2 plus 9 tenths plus 7 hundredths. That gives us an exact answer of 2 and 97 hundredths miles. We can also represent the decomposing strategy with pictures. In this case, we'll think of a flat as one, a rod as one tenth, and a square as one hundredth. So take a minute to create a picture in your mind of what two and two tenths miles would look like if we represented it with the blocks. We would show it with two flats and two rods. Now imagine what 77 hundredths would look like with the blocks. We would have seven rods to represent the seven tenths, and we would have seven squares to represent the seven hundredths. The picture now shows me that I can combine the tenths and have nine tenths. When I add all the blocks together, I can see the total of two and 97 hundredths miles. We decomposed both add-ins to solve this problem. How could you use a jump back strategy to solve this problem? Try it on your paper.
Here's one way to think about a jump back strategy. Since I know that on the first day I walk the dog two and two tenths miles, I might think about going a whole nother mile on the next day, which would get me to 3.2 miles. But I know that I didn't really walk one whole mile. I only walked 77 hundredths. So now I need to figure out how much I need to jump back. Well, the difference between 77 hundredths mile and one mile is 23 hundredths. So I can jump back two tenths of a mile to get to two miles and then jump back another three hundredths mile to get to two and 97 hundredths mile. Let's think about that same problem with some different numbers. Over the weekend, you walked the family dog. The first day, you walked one and nine tenths miles. And the second day, you walked 52 hundredths miles. How far did you walk the dog? Let's estimate first. What is your estimate? Here's the way one student thought about estimating this problem. Look at what you did and look at what this student did. What is the same and different about the way you estimated? Take a few minutes and use your pencil and paper to find the exact answer to this question. You might use one of the strategies that we've learned in this lesson, or maybe you have a different strategy that works for you. Here's an example of the way one student used the decomposing strategy. How did this student decompose the numbers? They pulled each add-in apart into ones, tenths, and hundredths. What did the student do next? This student added the tenths together to get a total of one and four tenths. Then the student was able to add all the parts back together to get an answer of two and 42 hundredths mile. Did you get the same answer? If not, see if you can figure out why. Today, we learned more about adding and subtracting decimals. Did you prefer to decompose the numbers or jump back to solve these problems? What are you still wondering after watching this lesson? Thank you for joining me for today's fourth grade episode of Math Matters, where we learned more about adding and subtracting decimals. I'm Miss Ott. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.